Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In 2020, I made a video showing PFSense and Unified Networks together. We did all the configuration, creating the VLANs, also creating some wireless networks and some firewall rules. Well, I think it's time for an updated video as the Unified controller has been updated quite a bit. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at mactelecomnetworks, and we have a Discord server, which I'll put a link in the description below. First, let's take a look at the topology of what we'll be using in this video. At the top, we have my internet connection, which is plugging into the WAN port of my NetGate 6100. From the NetGate 6100, we're going to my USW 24 port pro switch. And then from there, we have two Unify U6 Lite access points, and a real link 4K camera. Also connected to my USW Pro 24 PoE switch is a Unify Cloud Key Gen 1. And this will be hosting my Unify network controller. You don't need to have a cloud key to be able to host the controller and there's a couple different ways you could do it. You download it locally onto your computer. All you need to do is go to the Ubiquities downloads and then we could scroll down and we see our software. So we have Unify network application for Debian or Unix and then we have Windows and we have Mac OS. If you're looking for a cloud key, they have a couple different ones. This is the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. This would allow you to run Unify Protect, Access, and Unify Talk. But if you want to host it in the cloud, you could host it in Hostify, which I use for my customers, or you could build a VM yourself. So the networks we're going to create within the PFSense will be the LAN, which is our normal network of 192.168.111.1 slash 24. That's what all of our Unify equipment is going to get. The next network will be staff of 192.168.120.1 in VLAN 120. Then we'll have a guest network of 192.168.130.1 VLAN 130. And finally, we'll have a camera network on 192.168.140.1 slash 24 in VLAN 140. Now that we know what networks we're going to create, the first thing we'll do is go over to our PFSense and create those VLANs. So we'll go over to the PFSense NetGate 6100. And we can see that we have my WAN interface and then we have my LAN interface, which is already set up. I already went through the wizard for this. If you need to see the initial setup, I'll put a link down below. So the LAN is in 192.168.111.1. The next network we're going to create is our staff network. So we're going to go over to interfaces and then we'll go to assignments. From assignments, we'll go to VLANs and then we're going to add a VLAN. This VLAN will be over my parent interface of IGC0. This is the one cable that's going from my NetGate 6100 to my USW Pro switch. The VLAN ID we're going to give it is 120, and then we'll give it a description of staff. And press save. Now staff is created, we'll create our guest network. We're going to add the new VLAN. It will still be going over that same parent interface. So between the 6100 and the USW switch, it will be a trunk port. This VLAN tag will be 130 and we'll call it guest and press save. And the last VLAN we need to create is our camera network. It's going to be going over that same interface and it will get VLAN 140 and we'll call it cameras. And then press save. Next thing we need to do, we need to assign these VLANs an interface. So we'll go over to interface assignments and at the bottom we could see available network ports. If we click on the drop down menu, we could see all of our new VLANs. So I'll start with VLAN 120 and we'll press add. We can see it's added an interface of op7. So I'll click on op7. We're going to enable the interface and the IPv4 configuration type we're going to set to static. Under static IPv4 configuration, we're going to give it the IP of 192.168.120.1. And then we will do a slash 24. We'll scroll down to the bottom and press save and apply changes. Now we need to set up the DHCP server for this network. So we'll go to services and then go to DHCP server. Under the DHCP server, we could see our LAN and then we could see our staff. We're going to want to enable DHCP server on the staff interface. We'll scroll down and we could see our subnet information. And we could give it a range of IPs that we want the DHCP server to hand out. So we'll give it 192.168.120.10 to 192.168.120.1. You could also put in DNS information for this network if you'd like. I'm not going to do that, but we'll scroll down and press save. Now we need to go back and do that for our other two VLANs. So we'll go to interfaces and then assignments. Under assignments, we're going to hit the drop down and then we'll go to our guest network and press add. We'll click on opt eight. We'll enable the interface and we'll call it guest. Under the IPv4 configuration, it will be a static IP 
and then we'll give it the static IP of 192.168.130.1 and we'll change that to slash 24 and press save and apply changes. Now I'm just going to create the other interface while we're here then we'll do the DHCP. So I'll go back to assignments and then we're going to add the interface of our cameras. We'll click on op 9, we'll enable the interface, call it cameras and then the IPv4 configuration will be static. The IPv4 address will be 192.168.140.1 at slash 24. Press save and then apply changes. Now we have all of our VLANs created. We need to enable the DHCP servers for our guest and our cameras. So we'll go over to services and then we'll go to DHCP server. We already have the LAN and the staff set. So we'll go to guest. We'll enable the DHCP server. We'll give it a range of 192.168.130.10 to 192.168.130.200. Scroll down and press save. Now we need to do the same thing for our camera network. We'll enable the DHCP server, scroll down to the DHCP range and give it 192.168.140.10 to 192.168.140.200. Scroll down and press save. Now with all our networks created within PFSense, we need to set up the VLANs and our Unify network. So I'll go over to my cloud key and then we'll get the Unify controller started. So we're going to manage my Unify controller. And this is a brand new controller, so we'll need to do the initial setup. I'll leave the controller name as Unify Network and agree to the end user license and press next. I'll sign in with my single sign-on account. Now we're on step three. We'll leave automatically optimize my network off and then we'll enable the auto backups. And then we could see our three devices here. We won't adopt it yet, so I'll press next. It's asking to create a Wi-Fi network, but we'll do that in another screen, so I'll skip this. And then we'll review and I'll press finish. Now we're in our Unify controller. I'm using Unify version 6.55.5, which is the newest firmware as of this video. We need to adopt our devices. We could have done it in the initial setup, but I like doing it in this page. So we'll go over to our devices. And we could see that the USW Pro 24 is pending adoption as well as the two U6 lights. First, I'll adopt the switch as it will do a power cycle and we don't want the U6 lights power cycling while they're in the adoption phase. So I'll click on the USW24 Pro and then we'll press adopt device. Okay, our USW24 Pro is now adopted into our controller. We could adopt the two U6 lights. We'll click on the first one and then press adopt device and then click on the second one and press adopt device as well. While the two access points are adopting, we could get creating our VLAN. So we'll go over to settings and then we'll click on networks. We'll click add a new network and the first network that we're going to create is our staff network. So we'll call it staff. There's going to be no router, so we don't need to select that as we're using our PFSense for the firewall. And we'll click on the advanced. Below here, we need to put in a VLAN ID, which is 120. And this auto scale and DHCP server doesn't really matter because we're not using any Unify router for that. In the classic controller, we used to be able to specify if we want to have a corporate network or a VLAN only network. In this new UI, you can't do that. So we could leave everything as is and press add network. Under the subnet, we could see it's giving it an IP of 192.168.2.0, but we can't get rid of that and it doesn't matter. The unified network won't be handing us IP addresses. When we tag a switch port to be in the staff network, we'll be getting an IP from 192.168.120 network. And I'll show you that in a bit. So now we'll create our other networks. We need to create our guest network. We'll call it guest. And then we'll click on the advanced drop down and give it the VLAN ID of 130 and press add network. And now we'll add our camera network. We'll give it a name of camera, press on advanced, and then give it the VLAN ID of 140 and press add network. Now to show you that I'm getting an IP from the correct subnet, I'll tag one of the switch ports. So we'll click on our unified devices. I'll click on my USW Pro 24. I'll go to settings and then we'll go to ports. I'll scroll down and the port 22, I'm going to set this to be on the staff network and press apply changes. So I'm going to plug this computer into port 22. We won't have internet access as we haven't set up any firewall rules in the PFSense, but I'll show you that we're getting the correct IP. My computer is now plugged into port 22 and if I type in IP config, we could see that we're getting an IP of 192.168.120.10. So that's great. We're getting an IP from the correct subnet. Now we have the VLANs created. We need to create our wireless network. So I'll click on the settings wheel. We'll go to Wi-Fi and add a new Wi-Fi network. We're going to have it enabled and we'll give it a name. So this will be staff. 
And then we'll give it a password. I'll just put in test1234. And then we need to select which subnet we want this Wi Fi network to be on, which we want it to be on staff. So we'll click on the drop down menu and then press staff. I'm going to leave all the other settings at default and press add Wi Fi network. Now we can see the Wi Fi network of staff has been created. We're going to add a new Wi Fi network and I'm going to call this guest. We'll give it a password of test1234. And then we'll select the guest network from the drop down menu and press add network. For guest network, I'm going to want to limit the bandwidth which our guests could get. So we're going to go to the advanced features, scroll down, and then we're going to select the bandwidth profile. We're going to add a bandwidth profile. I'll give it a name of guest. Under the download bandwidth, we're going to change it to megabits per second, and I'll give it 10 megabits down, and then we'll give it five up. We'll press apply changes. And now we need to go back to our Wi Fi network of guests. So we'll click on Wi Fi, click on guest, we'll select the drop down menu for advanced. And then if we scroll down, we can see bandwidth profile. Currently it's on the default, but we could select our new guest bandwidth profile and press apply changes. Now the guest will be limited to 10 megabits per second down and five up, and that's per client. Now I need to set the camera into the correct VLAN. And how we do that, we go over to our unified devices and then to select the switch. My camera is connected to switch port three, so I'll click on settings, we'll go to ports, and then I'll go to the switch port three. Under the port profile, we'll hit the drop down menu, scroll down, and then put it into the cameras. And this is our VLAN, so I'll press apply changes. And to make that camera get an IP quicker out of the new subnet, we could click on the port, and then we could port power cycle, and then press confirm. And that's how you would set the VLAN for any network. So if you had ports 10 to 20 for the staff network, you would want to select them in the staff port profile. Next, we need to do a few basic firewall rules to get these networks internet access and then block them from inner VLAN routing. So we'll go over to my PFSense, we'll click on firewall, and then we'll go down to rules. We could see that we have a bunch of different interfaces here. We have my WAN, my LAN, and then we have a bunch of different WANs and a bunch of different LANs. These are physical interfaces on my NetGate 6100. We're only using the one interface for our uplink between the UniFi switch and the PFSense, and that's our LAN. And these are default rules that the PFSense create automatically. So now if we go over to our staff network, we could see that there's no rule. So this network could really do nothing right now. It can't reach out to the internet and it can't really talk to anything. So I'm gonna click on the up arrow of the add and we're going to select the action of pass. The interface will be staff. The address family is IPv4. And the protocol, we're going to set that to any. The source and destination for now, we'll have it set to any any. And we'll press save. I'm going to connect my computer to port 22, which is set to the staff VLAN. And we should get internet access. We're now plugged in. And let's do a quick IP config. And we could see we're getting that same address of 120.10. Now I could try pinging the internet. So I'll ping google.ca. And you could see that we're getting responses back. But the problem with having this any any rule, I could hit my administrative devices. So any of my UniFi gear. So if we look at my UniFi controller, we could see the USW Pro is on 192.168.111.14. So we'll ping 192.168.111.14. And I could easily hit any of my gear, which we don't want. So we need to put in a blocking rule to block that inner VLAN routing. So now if we go back to our PFSense, we could go to firewall and I'm going to create an alias. This alias is going to be an IP. I'll press add and then we'll give it a name. I'll name it RFC 1918. And this is all of our private IPv4 addresses. I'll give it the same description. And instead of host, we're going to go networks and we'll add the first network of 192.168.0.0 slash 16. We're going to add a network of 172. 16.0.0 and this will be slash 12 and we'll add one more network of 10.0.0.0 and that will be slash 8 and then we'll press save and apply changes now we need to go back to our firewall rule so we'll click on firewall and then go rules we'll click on the staff network and we're going to want to add a new rule to block the inner vlan routing this rule has to be above the any any. So we'll click the add with the up arrow. And the action will be to block. The protocol will be any. The source is going to be the staff net. And the destination is going to be a single host or alias. And then we need to put in the destination address of that RFC 1918 and press save. 
and apply changes. So with this rule in place, it's going to block us from reaching the firewall in our DNS server. So our DNS is on 192.168.111.1. So there's a few ways to do this. I'm just going to specify some DNS servers in the DHCP. So we'll go to services and then DHCP server. I'll click on our staff network. We'll scroll down. And then under DNS server, we'll give it 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And scroll down and then press save. Now if I connect to the staff network, we'll be able to reach out to the internet, but we won't be able to hit any of my unified devices and we'll try that now. We'll make sure we're on the staff network by going IP config. We can see we're still getting that 120.10. I'll try pinging google.ca and we can see we're able to reach out to the internet. Now we'll try to ping the USW switch. So ping 192.168.111.14. And you can see that the requests are gonna time out. Now, if we need our staff network to be able to access another network's resource, say a Synology NAS, we would have to put it in an accept rule. For this video, I'll just say that the staff network has to access the Rio link camera. Right now, if we ping the Rio link camera, we won't be getting any responses back and we can't get to it. That's because we don't have that accept rule in place. So let's go back to my PFSense and put that rule in. We'll go back to firewall and then we'll go to rules and we'll click on the staff. This rule needs to be above the block RFC 1918. So we'll hit the arrow up add and then we'll say pass. The interface will be staff. It will be IPv4 protocol will be any. The source is going to be our staff net. And then the destination, we're just going to put in the IP address of the camera. So we'll go single host or alias and the IP is 192.168.140.10. We'll scroll down, give it a description of staff to camera and then press save and apply changes. Now back on the staff network, we should be able to ping that real link camera, ping 192.168.140.10. And you could see that we can now access it. So that's gonna be it for this video. I showed you how to create some basic firewall rules, some VLAN, some DHCP servers, as well as get our unified network up and running with our unified network controller. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.